Evening, we've been dark for a couple of weeks, so getting back in our groove here. So we call the meeting to order. Morning. I'm uh, giving my three minute time to my daughter, Monica Mackay. It's so would I, uh, the mother. Good morning. Board of Supervisors, staff of the county, thank you for so the opportunity. Just, just for the record, you only get three minutes on, um, on public speaking. Okay. You, and you can't give minutes on, on the general public speaking. Can we start over then? Absolutely. <laughs> um, and even if somebody has a difficult time with English language, she couldn't honor the transfer to me. This is in regards to a very urgent matter. Start on it. Get going. Okay. Um, but it would be great if we can have the full we're, nine we're, minutes. We're losing time here, and you don't get full minutes, you get three minutes. Okay, and if we could start over, that would be awesome. Get, I appreciate it. That works. Go ahead, three minutes. And de on December in 2017, County Council Stacy Kiefer and court-appointed counsel Jack Osborne told the Judge Karaman that there was no emergency to remove Ryan Morris from his then conservator, Sean Spicer, even after he was found to be uncooperative with the investigator of the public guardian's office, refused to allow the investigator inside the residence or conduct her investigation and found him not to be an appropriate conservator at all. And even after his caretaker and mother, Teresa Spicer, admitted to the public guardian's investigative reporter that she had slit her wrist in an attempt of suicide in front of Ryan because she was so depressed that Ryan was in her residence. On May 1st of 2018, I, I came before this Board of Supervisors. I know some of you were not um, present at, electly elected at that time. However, we had filed, my mother and I, a, a special prosecutions complaint and an adult protective services referral in February of 2018 following Judge Caraman's referral to the adult protective services. And in the end of May, Judge Sunshine Sykes in Department 6 ordered an expert to investigate Ryan's capacity to marry where he sh and where he should be placed. And she also ordered this expert who came in December of 2018 to state that Ryan Morris did not have the capacity, uh, mental capacity to marry and should be placed in a neutral setting. All of 2018 until the end, several calls to the Sheriff's Department amounted to no report filed and the deputies still did not take responsibility under SB 1191 as is required by the Sheriff's Department. I want to mention that in April of 2019, Diane Ramirez, a 16-year-old dependent adult, while under the care of Michelle, the Michelle Morris home, died um, and due to uh, medical orders of a call that they called 911 after her condition was worsened. On May 8th of 2019, Michelle Morris Morris's home had a substantiated claim of another dependent adult ab uh, abuse for medical neglect. On May 19th of 2019, Michelle Morris surrendered her license as a care facility for dependent children and dependent adults. On May 17th, Judge Sunshine Sykes ruled after a multi-day a trial for the removal of Sean Spicer's conservatorship and care of Ryan Morris after hearing testimony of numerous instances of abusive behavior and removed him from his residence, placing him under the care and conservatorship of the Public Guardian's Office. Today, we are asking that this Board of Supervisors hold the county agencies accountable for dis the disabled community of dependent adults and children, including the DA's office and Sheriff's Department for numerous reports filed, emails, investigations of the Special Prosecution's report, which was filed spring of 2018. At all of this. Okay. Um, did you fill out cards too? No. There's three, there's three names on one card. Okay. So you can continue speaking or you can continue speaking. Her three minutes is up. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I mean, I can't continue speaking because she has all the notes there. Okay. And she has the full history of this uh, entire case. I just entered uh, a decision on just a couple of months ago okay. and that another, uh, uh, like she said, another adult uh, that was under the care of Michelle Morris' house uh, died and that's been widely publicized in Riverside, Orange, and L.A. County. Right. Uh, but I don't have anything to add 
And I know okay. she has a lot of documents that she could um, give to all of you, uh, you know, so you can uh, follow up uh, on this case, which is really a, uh, a lack of responsibility on uh, several different agencies in the county of Riverside as, as far as follow up and investigating to try and prevent the tragedy that just happened a few months ago with this uh, poor 16-year-old uh, that was in the, in the family home. Okay. Uh, but in any okay. event, I appreciate and would you your time. Like, would you like to speak? If your name's on the card, you're welcome to. Oh, well, that's you. Oh. Uh, there's, uh, there's four uh, items that we're requesting. Uh, she's the only one who's got time left uh, to speak. The, uh, my, I have a very heavy accent uh, of Italian. So I was thinking. Okay. Uh, she got. She, I give her all my information. I mean, my things to say to Monica. Okay. So I just read it. So the documents that uh, you folks have, you can leave them with the clerk of the board, and they will be distributed to all the members of the board. Um, that's not a problem. So um, unless you have any additional. Request to speak uh, to use your time. Minutes? Do I have a couple more minutes? Y yes, you have. Okay. You have my roughly two minutes. Pardon me? You have roughly two minutes. My daughter's asked me to read uh, what she, this outline, the Board of Supervisors to hold and the county agencies accountable to the, uh, the disabled community of dependent adults and children, including the DA's office and Sheriff's Department for numerous reports filed, emails, and investigation a special prosecution's report filed spring of 2018. That's number one. Number two, replacement of Prejudice County Council Attorney Stacy Kafer with unbiased neutral attorney representing the Public Guardian's Office rather than the huddling of the abusers. When she says huddling, she's talking about uh, Stacy Kiefer, who's the uh, attorney has been uh, on, she's supposed to be neutral, and yet she has been uh, constantly at, at the court hearings uh, with the defendant's uh, attorneys. And, the, and basically what she did is, um, oh, well, okay. Anyway, uh, instruct the Public Guardian's Office, who is currently the sole agency representing Ryan's best interest, to nullify the wedding where Ryan testified during trial and under oath during his deposition that he thought uh, that uh, uh, that an, an a baptismal uh, was being officiated, not a, uh, a marriage. That he just wanted to be friends with Sean Spicer and not married to him. Provide Ryan with all, not one or two, but appropriate uh, therapies and services for victims of sexual and dependent adult abuses, as he is still repeating emotional trauma and fears instilled in him during the years of sexual, physical, emotional, and mental abuses with his, his identical twin brother and myself, oh, identical abuses with his, uh, you know, in the family setting that he had with Michelle Morris, and that he could not see his identical twin brother or other family members. Uh, the thing I want to bring out is that, here, the thing I want to bring out is that the Public Guardian's Office had uh, appointed uh, a psychiatric investigation. That psychiatric inv investigation uh, was redacted. And what was redacted was a portion that said that after uh, 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 in interviewing um, my grandson, uh, Ryan Moore, that he did not have the mental capacity to enter into a marriage and that he was, um, and that Okay, well, sir, your your time is up as well. Okay. So, okay. again, the documents that you have, you're most certainly welcome to provide them to the clerk of the board. They will be shared with the full board. We obviously cannot discuss this. It's not in it's not an agenda, agendized item. It involves minors, which we do not discuss it publicly. It's not a minor. I thought you mentioned there was a minor there that was 16 years old. Oh, um, yes. And so, anyways, 
It's not on the agenda. We can't discuss it, but you can provide the documents to us. That minor so. is that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for your presentation. Do you have any other requests? Chair, speak? our last speak? speaker. A brief comment on that. Just so that those of the audience and those watching know that this is in process of an investigation, so it's not that we're ignoring this and, and shining this on. It is being in the process now, So, and you've gotten a response, so I just want to make sure that those in the audience know that we're not just our shoulders, it is, it is being investigated. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Edith Rogers. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm here after about 27 years. The first time I appeared before the board, the face has changed tremendously. Um, we brought to your attention the discrimination and abuse by the Housing Authority for the County of Riverside. Then Ms. Melba Dunlap, she did order them to do some corrections. Well, the fallout from them getting involved has been terrible. Um, we did get involved in an estate within the probate court in the County of Riverside before a judge, William Sullivan. Judge Sullivan was making um, rulings that were contrary to law. And um, we did file with the Commission on Judicial Performance. They did issue a letter. They could not come down and correct it, but they did order him to step down. He did step down within the County of Riverside. Not only was he um, prosecuted for certain things that he had done wrong, but I believe a public defender was prosecuted. Um, some members of the public guardian's office was prosecuted. Um, and um, a lot of things that they were doing were exposed. That probate case is still going forward some 27 years later. Um, we now know why. There has been rare earth that has been discovered on our family's property. And um, needless to say, a number of people um, had their eyes set on taking the property from the family, as Judge Sullivan was doing, appointing himself as trustee, reallocating funds, money, and attorneys and the judges were um, stealing property from unsuspecting citizens and um, investing in it themselves. Well, there's a good old boy network within the system. I don't believe I'm here by chance, especially since I heard the previous case, because they have set out um, retaliatory actions against myself for exposing and engaging in whistleblowing. Um, there was a lot of um, misappropriation of county funds, um, a lot of different things that was going on. And even though they do appoint conservatorship um, um, legal, conser legal conservators over disabled adults and so forth, um, they network with these judges in getting the property from the people and their funds. It's a big money maker within the system. Um, I would like for the county to um, at least assign someone to sit down and review everything that we have because we have connected all the dots. The um, judges that's been, um, we were the ones who gave the information over that got Judge Sullivan removed. And so now we have Judge Thomas Caraman, who is in Department 8. I thought he was an excellent judge, but we have found that his hands is in the pot as well. The attorneys involved is Brian Hartnell, David Horsepool, Karen Horsepool, um, Ralph Heckman, um, a number of other people, um, Melody Scott. Um, Your time is up. If you have documentation, please give it to the clerk of the board and then she can share it with us. If you have documentation, you can provide it to the clerk of the board. Um, don't know the answer to that yet. All right, thank you. Any other speakers? No. All right, thank you all for addressing the board this morning.